I'd be willing to bet a good, a substantial amount. I'd, I'd bet, I'd go on the Long Bets website and bet ten thousand dollars right now that we are very early to the party. Do you think there's life on other planets? Yes. Considering what we logically know right now, given that we have no evidence yet of alien life, we have to admit that we could be alone. And yet, just given the sheer number of worlds we know to exist in our galaxy alone and all the possible environments out there, it very much feels like we can't be alone, that there, there must be something else out there in the cosmos. Are we early or late to the party? Did we seem to develop our life early or are we like, no, actually, maybe everybody else is already way past us if there is life in other places? Yeah, I love that question. And I think we're early. Uh, if I had to put money on it, I would, I would, I'd be willing to bet a good, a substantial amount. I'd, I'd bet, I'd go on the Long Bets website and bet ten thousand dollars right now that we are very early to the party, um, because it seems, like I said, so, so in the, the evolution of the universe, at least in the first couple of billion years, it probably wasn't possible to form any of the kind of life as we know it. Um, so not only to have the elements of carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, that took some time to build up, but to make phosphorus and sulfur, and then to start forming enough. Iron and nickel and molybdenum and all these other things, you need a lot of evolution in stars. You need neutron star mergers and supernova explosions. You need stars to go through billions of years of evolution and then they slough off their outer layers and blow parts of their planets out to space. There's a lot of, of, of universal cosmological evolution that probably had to happen to reshuffle all of the elements we needed to start building Earth like planets, um, you know, four and a half billion years ago when our solar system formed. Maybe one thing holding back a lot of life from becoming life like us and having plants and animals and fungi and all these different kinds of modes of operation and stuff like that is that most of the worlds haven't had enough time yet to get there. Uh, there have been some really interesting things that have happened to life on Earth over time that have allowed us to form this way from you know the creation of our moon to stabilize our orbit uh, through early evolution to the development of oxygen in our atmosphere because of life. You know, life altered our planet, which then allowed for life as we know it to come around uh, to breathe oxygen and use that as, as, a, as an energy source. And so Earth went through a lot of key things that maybe just don't happen as often for some other worlds. Uh, there's an idea out there called the rare Earth hypothesis that maybe some other planets just don't go through enough of the things that we've gone through to actually get to life like us. Um, personally, I'm, I don't really ascribe to that as much. I, I think we might find out that some of these things aren't necessary. Maybe having a big moon isn't necessary. Maybe having plate tectonics isn't necessary, um, but it definitely seems like it was helpful for life as we know it. Do we have a good definition of what life is? <laughs> Not at all. Um, yeah, we've tried. There, there's over 300 attempted definitions of life. And one that you'll hear a lot, like online, you know, if you go online and look it up, it's also something that's called the NASA definition, even though it's never been made official by NASA. Uh, it's that life is a self-contained chemical system capable of Darwinian evolution. Is there any kind of debate slash controversy in that regard and that like we found this thing and i think it's life but you don't think it's life is there anything like that we're like well maybe we did we're just not defining it correctly yeah, there, there have been a few examples where something kind of like that has happened um so like the viking experiments on mars back in the 1970s uh, we had these two landers the viking landers they had a series of instruments on board these biology experiments um, and none of them turned up biology. They were very much looking for life as we know it on Mars, things that like photosynthesize or like us that, that take in organic molecules and break them down and make carbon dioxide and breathe that out. Um, they were looking very much for Earth life on Mars. But one of the experiments called the labeled release experiment was basically like feeding organic molecules that were, were, were labeled with a radioactive element. Um, to some of the soil with some water and then looking to see if, the, if if anything in the soil was like eating those molecules and then breathing out CO2. And they got a little whiff of what looked like a positive indicator of biology occurring. Um, but the consensus with amongst the scientists who've, you know, over the, the decades have reviewed that research over and over again is that it doesn't appear to be a sign of life. It doesn't fit with anything else. None of the other instruments showed any support for it being a sign of life. And so they think it was actually a process of a salt in the soil reacting with some of the organics that we know are there um, in the process of adding this water. And that was what was releasing the CO2. And so we have a good non-life uh, way for, for us to have had that sign. But even the guy who ran the experiment, Gil Levin, uh, he passed away a few years ago now, but up until the time he, he died, 
he he honestly very admit, you know, adamantly believed that he had found life on Mars because of that experiment. What planet do you look at right now and say, okay, that's probably – that's our best chance? Yeah, so, and so people that love that question, I think it's actually a really hard one to answer for a few reasons. One, I think the best world beyond the Earth in our solar system to ever have had life was Venus, but only really long ago. Uh, so in the modern day, Venus, Venus has gone through a lot of geological and atmospheric change. It went through what appears to be like its entire surface melted sometime in the past, maybe 500 million or a billion years ago. Uh, its atmosphere has undergone a runaway greenhouse effect. If it did have oceans, which many of us think it most likely did early on, it lost those oceans. It never had a moon forming event to form a large moon like ours that would help stabilize its orbit um, and maybe even help drive plate tectonics. And so Venus underwent a lot of different processes than the Earth, but early on, Venus might have been the best bet. Now, in the modern day, there are, are worlds like Europa and Enceladus that have these, these subsurface oceans under their icy crusts that are begging for us as scientists and explorers and people who want to know to go get into those oceans and see if there could be signs of life there. Uh, for Enceladus in particular, the water from its ocean is spewing out into into space around the moon and forming one of the rings of Saturn, uh, the E-ring e of Saturn. And so those could be really great places to look for life. But again, that also depends if life can start in oceans or not. Uh, and so right now it seems like Mars, at least in our own solar system, is currently the best candidate. We can land humans there. We can land robots there. We can explore there really easily. We could bring samples back from Mars pretty easily and, and explore them and look for possible signs of life. Um, admittedly for myself, I think if we find any signs of past or present life on Mars, it's going to be very, very deep in the subsurface. Uh, so deep that I don't think we've actually gotten that deep, like not, not deep enough yet to actually look for those samples. How do you look for life on other planets? <laughs> There's a lot of ways. I mean, so yeah, so if it's like Independence Day and like the alien spacecraft comes down into our atmosphere tomorrow, um, then we can say, yeah, that, those are aliens. They're here. Um, if we go to Mars and we see like a rock, like get up on legs and walk in front of a camera, then sure, that's, that's an alien. But outside of that, it can be really difficult. So if it's not like obvious, like a huge apparent thing. And it's not moving. And it's not making itself apparently some living thing. It could be a little bit more challenging. And so that's where we go into the realm of biosignatures, uh, signs of life, things that life creates that are diagnostic of life being present. The same way that we can look, you know, if you're out, you know, with, with your children going for a walk in like a park or a forest and you, you may, may look down and see some mud, maybe you see some paw prints or animal tracks in the mud. Those are a biosignature. They're an indicator that there was a living thing present at some point in the past. Um, we do the same thing looking at the chemistry of life. So trying to look for a barrage of different kinds of things life might leave behind um, and mineral signatures in the way that the, the rock is changed by life being present and how it makes different layers of rock form together. We can look for things like the, the presence of amino acids in certain ratios, uh, the presence of, of certain isotopes of various atoms that are present in the environment. Uh, there's a lot of these like diagnostic signatures of life that we can look for on a place like Mars or the atmosphere of Venus or in the ocean of Europa. Um, but then on top of that, there's also another realm called technosignatures. So within this realm of, of biosignatures, all these different signs of life, there's a, a smaller realm of the signs of technological activity. And so those are things like SETI, like looking for, looking for, like listening for messages coming from space that are created by a technological civilization, or looking into an exoplanet's atmosphere to see if there's like industrial gases uh, or like chlorofluorocarbons that we had created on Earth, you know, like looking for some kind of sign of technology, which could include even maybe one day finding an alien artifact in our solar system or flying into our solar system. There's a lot of possibilities there as well.